welcome to the Mindful Making YouTube channel. These videos are mostly about yarn and about knitting because knitting is my mindfulness practice. That's where I relax, that's where I recharge my batteries and knitting makes me grounded. Today I am outside again. It is uh, the 5th of April 2021. It is Easter Monday, so we have a day off. The family is home, so there might be noise from them making coffee or something. And you will hear birds and maybe a plane coming over once in a while. But I hope uh, the sound is okay. Uh, although those minor interruptions. But anyway, um, I am here sitting on my terrace outside our house in Hornsby Heights, north of Sydney. My name is Jane and I'm Danish, but we moved to Australia almost nine years ago now. Welcome to a lot of new viewers who have subscribed to this channel after the, my last episode. It's so good to have you here. I'm really thrilled that you found this little corner of the internet and uh, would like to follow my adventures into knitting. I hope you feel inspired. Uh, please um, put in comments of what you would like to see or hear more of or questions you might have um, that makes it so much more interesting for me to engage with you that way. So please do that and I'm thrilled to have you here. Returning viewers, welcome back. It's great to have you here as well. And I know that there are a lot of um, Danes watching, so welcome to jer. Det er hyggeligt at have jer med. Vi er i, nu i efteråret, men det ligner jo ikke efterår. Det er sommertemperatur, der er 26 grader i dag. Um, so welcome to yeah. So back in English, uh, I just said uh, yeah, welcome, and that it is autumn, uh, but it doesn't look like an, a Danish autumn. It basically looked like a, a Danish summer. We have twenty six degrees today. So what I have for you in in this video today are two finished objects and maybe a sneak peek of something that is coming up as well which is finished as well um then i have two works in progress so a, a sweater or a jacket and a pair of socks that i will show you the jacket may be a bit it's a bit of a secret still but anyway so two works in progress um, and then I have some yarn that I want to show you and I have to say that um, the yarn have been uh, gifted and so it's sponsored yarn that I have received so just so that you're aware of that. I hope you have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of water, a glass of wine and have your project so uh, so let's uh, dig into it. I'll just uh, grab a um, bit of water Where you can find me is um, I am Mindful Making on Instagram and on Facebook. On Ravelry, you can find me as Mindful Making AU. And I also have an Etsy shop of that name where you can find um, knitting patterns that I have designed. Uh, they are available in the Etsy shop and also on Ravelry. Starting with what I'm wearing, um, I am wearing the. Uh, Ranunculus. <laughs> that shouldn't be so hard. Ranunculus, um, it is worked in a silk tweed. It's a very old yarn now discontinued, but it's a wool silk uh, blend from Drops Garn. And if I try to stand up, uh, there will be noise from the chair. <laughs> so it's it's fairly cropped. Um, but sort of uh, airy and light and three quarters sleeves and now the noise of the chair again. Um, so I like to to wear it uh, in the in the summer. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this one, especially because it's so white and airy. I wonder if the details I put them up on Ravelry, I hope so. 
there is a backlog of latest projects that I haven't had the time to put up on Ravelry, so please excuse that. So that's what I'm wearing today. I finished this probably a couple of years ago. Um, so you could say, but why aren't you wearing the garden gate that we saw on the last, uh, in the last episode? It's simply too warm. I would have worn it, um, but it's just too warm. But here it is. It is finished. So that's the, uh, the first finished object of today. It's the Garden Gate sweater designed by Jennifer Steingas. She is Knit Love Wool on Instagram. She is the, I think, the expert in um, round color, color work yoke knitting or styles. So here it is, finished and blocked. <laughs> when blocking it, I um, I am blocked it on my body, so uh, <laughs> it was a bit tight. And if you remember the last episode, I made it twice. So first time it was too there was too much fabric up here in uh, sort of on, on at the neck around the shoulders. There was way too much fabric up here. So I redid it and went down a size. So this is size C in her patterns. So I think that is a finished bust measurements around 40, um, 40 inches. And um, when done and I tried it on, it was slightly sort of uh, tight fitted. And uh, I washed it. And instead of laying it flat to dry, I thought I would just uh, put it on. And then I pulled a bit in on the sleeves just to, to widen them a bit or stretch them a bit. Um, and it fits perfectly. What you can see when it's blocked on the body is that um, you can see my elbows here. <laughs> so it's in, uh, it sits in a body shape. The yarn is the um it's a super soft 100% uh, lamb's wool and it's from Holst Garn. in the skein which i have here so these are the two colors that i used in the skein it's a, it can feel a bit coarse there's a bit of that spinning um, i was about to say spinning wheel left um spin oil spinning oil left but that totally disappears and the yarn just blooms beautifully when it's washed and it gets very very soft and lovely it's soft and light it's a oh Esther, i'm podcasting okay sorry well, that's all right so oh <laughs> oh oh, oh. What? Yeah, it's a I woolen spun, hopefully that I'm saying that correctly when the fibers is is um, is laying like this and it's not sort of in the same direction. That means that the uh, spinning has a lot of air in it. So it's it's very it's very light. It weighs about 200 grams on a jumper. So it is very lightweight. Uh, so in this jumper, I have used 1,080 meters of yarn. And uh, sorry, I didn't mention the color names again. This is the iced, which I chose as my contrast color. This is called sage blue as the main color. So I used 170 gram of the main color and 35 grams of the uh, contrast color. Uh, I might insert a video of me wearing this so you can see that it fits beautifully. I did sort of a modification. I just added a few um, a bit of waist shaping, not much, just a few increases and decreases. 
I'm not so pleased about uh, how I bind it off. I want it initially, I think the uh, sort of the ribbing just flipped up. And I thought maybe it was because it was too tight, tightly bound off. So I redid that, but now it's sort of a bit flary. Any suggestions? Any reasons why the ripping you know, the hem might sort of flip up? Is it because it's too loose or too tight? Too few stitches? Um, I use the same number of stitches going into the hem as I had on the body. Anyway, it is as it is, and if um, if I get annoyed, I will just redo that hem. But this is the garden gate. I am very happy. It will be an excellent uh, jumper to wear at the office and around uh, going for a walk uh, in, or going in the garden or just uh, out and about um, when winter comes. Where it will be mostly used though, it would be indoors, sitting, uh, working from home because it gets um, rather cold in our houses in the winter. So I'm sure this will get a lot of wear when the uh, temperatures drops. When the temperatures drop in a month or two. I'm happy, I'm happy. So Garden Gate, Jennifer Steingas. The first finished object. Second finished object is, um, is the socks for my mum. So they are here. So it's my regular go-to uh, two by two rib pattern. It's basically, and, I, and I've said this before, it's inspired by my husband's grandmother who always knitted socks that way. And it gives a, a nice um, tight fit around the leg and also over the foot. These are worked in Yavul a superwash yarn from Lang Yarns and sorry I can't remember the color numbers I do have the labels but it's color numbers and now I didn't put the um, just a sample of the yarn on it so I can't remember what color it is but it's a light gray mild mild colorway as you can see here I ran out of yarn but as I, I, I knitted them two at a time, so it was at the same point on both, both socks. So they are identical. So I added in leftover of a, a lighter gray as well. And with a darker gray and you know, should be with all the numbers and details, but sorry, I don't have them. Uh, as the heel and toe, like this. 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle and it is a I think a size 40. So I just added a few I think an extra or two rows here for the heel just to give a bit more room around um, the ankle. So now that I've shown you these socks I can wrap them and send them off to my mom. Her birthday was the 1st of March. So they will be six weeks late, but um, she has seen them on, uh, on an Instagram post and she liked them. And I think, you know, she sits watching TV and um, she can wear them with her feet up on her television when sitting in her TV chair. She turned 89 and she's doing well, so it's a pleasure to have knitted these for her. If I just look at the stats then for these, 
so I started on the 14th of March, March and they were finished and off the needles on the 19th of March. Uh, I have used 60 gram of yarn for these, so 252 meters. With these two finished objects, that's also the status of my knitting in March. So down here I, uh, I have my knitting journal <laughs> that I can refer to. And if I then go to the stats from March, two finished objects, which is not much. I felt that I've been knitting a lot, but I say that every time. And I have knitted up 1,332 meters in the month of March. Yeah, I think there will be more in April. And as I said in the last episode, the meter of yarn used will be included in the month where the project is finished. And I do have one more finished object that will, uh, that will be included in next month's um, tally. So this year so far, I have knitted five socks two sweaters, one summer top, and one cowl. Finished. Another finished object that is that I will just show you slightly because there will be come more t details about that. It's a new design that is in the making, but it is a squishy jumper in this beautiful yarn and a lovely halo with silk more hair so it's double stranded and it's yarn that is kindly sponsored by skein sisters so thank you you can see the colors here so i finished that jumper on the 2nd of april so that will be included in the tally for next month those were the finished objects in today's video, I will also insert a few snippets of um, what we've done in the Easter break, because it is the Easter break. We haven't done very much. We've basically relaxed at home. Um, Friday, we were exhausted, basically. So, uh, so, so, you know, after a few very busy months and we just needed to relax and recoup, and Saturday, I was, as usual, out out and about with my son for his football match. We drove 60 kilometers to his match, and um, there will be a bit of footage from a walk that I did where we went. So it's a new, it's a way of, of, of um, seeing new places in Sydney and surrounds. Um, so I enjoy that. And then there is a bit of a, <laughs> From a bit of footage from the game, I um, I tried to video when there was a corner just to see if uh, if uh, a goal came, but none came that way. So uh, and I didn't get to film the the goal that that was scored. So they won one nil, which was very which was a delight. So you will see that. So while my son is warming up and preparing for his uh, football match, I have gone for a walk in a close by natural park uh, or national park setting. It is in Bonnie Rig and um, there are just people celebrating everywhere and I uh, have I've just did a bit of footage and filming uh, of their setup, which I quite find quite amazing. So uh, this is uh, a great way of spending the extra hour when my son is playing football. I get to go to all parts of Sydney. Today we travelled 60 kilometres to get here for his match. Uh, 
and as you can hear I am a bit out of breath to be honest I haven't done much exercise the last few days so uh, so here I am on a uh, just a three kilometer loop but uh, let me turn around the camera so you can see what I am looking at Let's move on to what is on the needles. Um, I have another pair of socks and it's a very simple vanilla sock, plain stockinette, one by one ribbing, two at a time magic loop. It is 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter. These are for my older son. He is planning on moving to Denmark, so um, I think I will sneak in a pair of mum's handmade socks into, into his suitcase as a little surprise for him when he opens his suitcase. I don't know when he will leave though, probably in a couple of weeks time. I think it depends on how um, you know what is what is the possibilities for flying flight tickets um, how open is it in Denmark is it still in lockdown you know he needs to earn some money so there needs to be opportunities for that he's 21 and he's just looking forward to, uh, to leaving home these are worked again in the wool uh, Superwash from Langyang, and here I do have the number, uh, color 934. So this, uh, you know, is a dark charcoal, mild. This is a 75-25 wool nylon blend. It's a workhorse of a sock yarn. Um, so that's uh, that's my sort of uh, out and about knitting project. And when I need a project where I can just relax and I don't need to think too much, it's just letting my hands work. So we need those kind of projects in between as well, when just the head is full of everything and um, and just need a break. Two at a time. Magic loop, uh, cuff to toe. Yeah, and uh, when I started these, I think by at the end of March, so I haven't worked sort of very, um, 
I haven't been so focused on working on those. The last project on my needles is a bit of a secret. It's another design that I'm working on. I will share just the color of the yarn. It's in this color. It isn't available yet. Uh, it's a beautiful, deep, mustardy brown yellow. I've just cast it on yesterday and or oh, the day before, I think over Easter. And it, so I'm test knitting my own pattern and I did find a mistake. So that's, uh, that's excellent. And I think with having a break like this, I should relax, but I do relax and certainly get the, uh, the headspace to, to look at my calculations and the patterns. And so I've been working on those um, a bit. So I found the mistake, I unraveled, I've um, started again. A bit of a cliffhanger, huh? Can't show you much. Again, this yarn is sponsored by Skein Sisters, so thank you for that. Yeah, so that is on the needles. Uh, sometimes I will show you much more. Finally, another uh, yarn um, that has been gifted to me and that I'm testing and um, about to test. And it is a yarn again from Louis and Lola. So Karina, she is a um, hand dyer living in Tasmania. And this yarn is a 80% merino, 20% possum. It's a fingering weight, uh, 390 meters, 426 yards in 100 gram. The color is called Ruby. And I know that she just launched these yarns at the uh, end of March. These two, as I said, has been gifted. I have to say this, I think, you know, so it's a sponsored um, yarn that I could test out. And I have plans with these two. <laughs> oh, isn't it annoying when you can't say much? Um, but I can't wait to, you know, get a few th more things done and then doing a, a test of this yarn, yarn to see how it knits up and after a wash and soak, how it looks. It's super deliciously soft. Um, so a possum and uh, this color is called Ruby. The possum gives a, an underlying gray base so that's why you get sort of these um, heathered colors. Karina has many more uh, colors on her website, so you can go and have a look. There were grays and greens and browns, and uh, I think they, they, uh, they were quite popular when she had them on at the, I think, 27th of March. Then she might be dying up some more. But I'm looking very much forward to try out these lovely skeins of merino possum fingering weight. Fingering. I think that was it for the knitting content. Pretty quick and sharp. Then uh, I will just grab the socks and we could have a sort of a knit chat and I will tell you a bit of what has happened and plans for the future and so in March if just doing a bit of status so thank you so much for uh, supporting the birthday sale of patterns um, yeah in celebration of my birthday the 7th of March thank you for that I'm looking forward to seeing all those uh, beautiful projects out there. Uh, the Solidago show was most popular this time around. So I'm looking very much forward to seeing those as finished object and in progress for that matter. 
uh, in April, in April, the 21st of April, I will be hosting a knit night at the Danish church in Pennant Hills. So if you are uh, around Sydney and would want to come for join me at a knit night where I would sort of do a half an hour of presentation and then there are opportunities to ask questions and chit chat and knit um, share experiences so it's a Wednesday the 21st of April 7 30 to 9 30 the Danish church um, Hillcrest Road in Pennant Hills which is again um, one of the northern suburbs of Sydney the topic of this Midnight, the 21st of April, will be um, inspiration. So I will talk about where I find the inspiration differences between, I guess, the inspiration that I get from um, the Danish knitting world and the inspiration from the knitting world down here in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I say, down here in the southern hemisphere which is, a, which is a big big area mostly australia and new zealand um and there are differences in those traditions um, and styles and so forth and i'm planning on using that presentation that i do for that midnight and i will show you it to you next time in the next podcast and talk about that so 21st of April, it will be in English, so everybody can participate. There is a little symbolic entry fee and there will be plenty of coffee and tea and uh, a little sweet thing to enjoy as well. So um, the format will be, you know, a half an hour presentation and teaching or walkthrough by me and then chats and questions and talks and uh, having a good time knit knit chat um for the remaining of the evening 21st of april there will be four evenings so one uh, one each month april may june july so over the winter here with different topics each time as I said, the first one will be inspiration. So there will be something about gauge and um, um, swatching. And then there will be about fit and the measurements to, uh, to take sort of body measurements and how you can adjust um, the knitting pattern so that it fits you better. That will be the third one. And the fourth is still to be decided. That could be whatever comes up of interest of the group. You may, you don't have to come to all four. Just come to um, one or many. So um, I'm looking very much forward to that. That will be a new thing for me to do. But um, yeah, I will keep you posted on how it how it goes. Otherwise, we have as a family as i mentioned stayed home for easter we have enjoyed the day off the days off uh, of work which is very nice had some beautiful food gone for a few walks and um, been to the gym just to get a bit of exercise in again my son participated the youngest son participated in world's greatest shave so he uh, got completely shaved he shaved all his hair in um, in support of the leukemia foundation it's starting to grow out again now so i think it's at maybe five millimeters or something um <laughs> it's a way to test how the uh, how the sort of the shape of the head is um, and he, he looks good. Uh, he is off on school holidays, so it's school holidays now uh, for the next two weeks. My daughter is having a term break from uni as well, so she is off as well. My older son has had 
four wisdom teeth removed so he's a bit yet sore on on right side and a bit swollen but otherwise it went well that was thursday just before easter so he he has had a a, a very quiet few days lately but it's going well it's it's doing well so i hope you have enjoyed this half an hour with me with a bit of um trips to the football ground and in the nature now a plane is coming over again i hope you've had a wonderful easter break have had you know have had the opportunity to relax to catch up with family maybe not visiting if you are still in in, in lockdown and can't uh, see that many people but maybe virtually we had a um a virtual family gathering yesterday so um we catch up on so we have a group call on messenger first sunday each month which is very nice and just, we see those small my nephews and nieces have have the small babies and you, we can see them grow over time and talking away and walking around and uh, that's good we're spread around the world you know in Norway Denmark and Australia so it's a good way of, of, of just catching up what have inspired me lately over the last month I've watched some new podcast and videos um, sort of on YouTube I like Sar Sari Nitz, which is Sari Norman, Norman, Sari Norman, a knitwear, Finnish knitwear designer. She um, designs beautiful um, patterns. I like watching her videos. I have also watched uh, The Gentle Knitter, which is, and I can't recall her name. She is Canadian, very um, calm to listen to and beautiful projects as well in um, sort of neutral tonal grey colours, a colour scheme that uh, I enjoy. Another uh, podcast that I also found was 50 Fabulous Knits. It's a Danish lady. And she has started doing her podcasts in English, so uh, that might be something to to watch as well. She also has a very um, muted color pa palette, which is very much in the the, the uh, hundreds of shades of gray. And finally, uh, I really enjoy Mrs. Valgren makes a Swedish podcaster and I'm very much inspired by those um, neutral natural colors and and she does that as well she sews a lot of, um, in linen sort of natural fibers I like her podcast and then finally a good friend of mine Ellie and um, fiber bound she I think she has four or five episodes out um, a very talented knitter she hasn't knitted for that long but uh, she does <laughs> she says she's she's maybe even more addicted than me um, she gets a lot done and I'm uh, impressed of, of all her projects so um, please feel free to to check those out and now I Hi. think it's time to let you go thank you for joining in uh, I hope you've had a great time and please do subscribe and um, put in a comment, share with your friends and as you know the little bell will give you notifications when there is a new episode up. Now I will get on to the editing. Uh, so that will take a, a couple of days. It is a, a quite laborious process but um, it's fun as well to create a bit of a story. So um, I hope you enjoy that. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a lovely Easter and see you next time.
Happy Knitting.